Now here I have taken about 2 cups of grated fresh coconut or maybe one medium sized coconut which you can grate entirely. This is about 3 4 cup of milk, about 1 teaspoon of freshly ground elaichi or cardamom powder and this is about 2 cups of sugar. Now I have just taken very little ghee and just greased this plate and we are going to use a heavy bottomed pan like this. Now I put the flame on low and I have just added the coconut, the sugar and the milk into this heavy bottom pan and I am going to use a wooden spoon with a long handle and we are just going to stir this mixture on a low to medium flame till all of the ingredients come uh, together very well that is all of the sugar melts well and you will see that the consistency changes first it was a solid consistency now it is becoming a little bit of a liquid consistency as the sugar melts and then it just starts to thicken up now this liquid does splutter about here and there so just be extremely careful that's why I use a long handled wooden spoon because the wooden spoon will not heat up and keep changing the flame from low to medium as it bubbles. Then you will see that it thickens up like this and it starts leaving the sides of the pan. After some time you will see that it becomes really, you know, it all comes together like this. That's the time when you add your cardamom powder or elaichi powder and just stir for another half a minute. Now this entire process of stirring took me exactly 12 minutes. I timed myself on the watch. You know, so around it should take you around 12 to 15 minutes for this mixture to get ready. Now put the flame off and we're just going to transfer this mixture onto this greased plate. Now it is, you can use a normal aluminium, uh, you know, uh, tin that we use uh, normally but I would prefer to, that we use a steel plate because then it really sets very well so if you have a small steel plate like this just grease it with a very little bit of thoop or ghee or if you don't have ghee you can use even butter but very little don't put too much just about a drop of uh, ghee and then just take a wati like this just put a little bit of ghee or butter on the top of the wati like this and then just smoothen out the top of this vadi. Now this plate should have at least an inch of thickness because we want the vadis to be nice and big and thick. We don't want them to be very tiny and small. So even if you have an aluminium tray, you can use that too. Just press it down with the vati because the mixture is very hot. So don't try to do it with your hands. This will give it a very nice even texture and then when the mixture is hot itself, just cut them into a desired shape. Now I like the square shape and also if you want to add some color to this, so just before you add the cardamom powder, just add your food color. But I like it plain and white like this, it really looks very nice. And now we're going to let this sit for at least an hour. You can refrigerate it. I just kept it outside for about an hour to set, covered it and kept it outside. And then you just lift up each of the pieces carefully and you get these beautiful vadis. And they harden up also pretty fast but they're still soft yet, you know, uh, firm. They don't fall apart or they don't have that barfi texture. They have a very different texture so you need to try this out friends if you haven't already. <music>
and uh, about half a cup of dry fruits and I've greased my baking tray with some butter and put a baking paper or butter paper on it and lined it. Now I'm going to add the basin and the ghee to my pan, put the heat on and I'm going to cook this for about 5 to 10 minutes till the mixture all comes together very very well like this. So this should take you about 5 to 8 minutes you know, till you get the aroma of the, of the basin coming through. Just keep on uh, you know stirring the mi mixture continuously on a low to medium flame. Now first it will all come together like this and then again it will become into a kind of a semi liquid form. Don't stop stirring otherwise the mixture will get burnt. So just keep on stirring for 5 to 8 minutes. See it's become into a liquidy form like this. And at this point, you'll get the lovely aroma of the, uh, you know, frying ghee. At this point, you're going to add a little of the syrup at the time. Be careful, the syrup is hot. And keep stirring. Now you'll see that the color of the mixture also darkens as well as it starts to thicken almost instantly. But don't stop stirring. Taste the mixture to see if you want to add more of the sugar syrup or if you're happy with the taste then leave it that way otherwise you can add as per your taste and now we're going to again stir this liquid for another five minutes till it leaves the sides of this pan now it has i'm just going to grease put some little bit more of ghee onto my uh, butter paper that way the mixture will not stick and now I'm going to put the mixture into the tray and then flatten it out in this fashion. This is a super tasty uh, recipe and it's very different from besan ladu, you know the normal besan ladu that we are used to. This has got a different taste altogether. So get all of that mixture in the pan and putting the butter paper down and also my pan, my cake tin rather has a removable base so it becomes very easy to remove the, you know, the barfi. Now I'm just going to garnish it with these nuts. I've gone only with pistachios, you can, uh, you know, and almonds, you can make a mixture of whatever, cashew nuts, but just chop them up finely and then press them down into the barfi like this so that it becomes the top layer of the barfi. And now we're going to set this aside for 10 minutes. Now after 10 minutes, I'm just going to uh, roughly, uh, you know, just cut up the squares like this because it becomes easier then to cut the squares later on once it hardens. And then I'm going to refrigerate this for at least two to three hours. And after two to three hours, you will see that it's become so easy to take out the barfi. So just take a sharp knife and go over the lines that you made. And this thickens, you know, it hardens up, you know, very, very quickly. So if you refrigerate it for two hours, it's very easy to handle these barfis. And there it is, friends. Your barfi is all ready and you must make this because it's really, really delicious and it's a totally different taste from the besan lado. So I hope you give this a try, guys. Bowl, I'm going to add 100 ml of melted ghee or butter uh, uh, clarified butter and i'm going to whisk this for five minutes now i'm using an electric whisk you can also use a regular whisk to that i'm going to add 125 grams of powdered sugar and i'm going to mix these two really well and again whisk this for five minutes so you can put a timer on your phone and you know uh, whisk it till it becomes into a nice light pale yellow color So all I'm doing is just trying to get everything from the sides, you know, to the center. And now I'm going to add 250 grams of plain flour or maida, you know, a little at a time and just fold it in well. 
and now I'm just going to you know use my hands and I'm going to knead this to a very soft dough now the dough might seem soft and you might be tempted to add a little more flour but don't do that and now let the dough rest for about 15 minutes so in the meantime I'm going to set my oven uh, you know uh, to 170 degrees preheated up and I'm also going to line my baking tray with some baking paper and I'm also going to cut these cherries into halves And now I'm just going to make small balls using a tablespoon like this and placing them and then placing a cherry on top. So don't forget to preheat your oven, you know, for, for 10 minutes. And now we're just going to bake this at 170 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. Keep an eye on the uh, biscuits. They shouldn't be brown. You know, they shouldn't get brown on the top. And then let them cool on a baking rack or a cooling rack for at least 5 to 10 minutes. And you will see that the base of it should be light brown in color. Whereas the top should be white in color. And that's it friends. These beautiful cherry knob biscuits are ready. And these will really look very pretty. Today's recipe. I've taken 1 cup of plain flour or maida. This is 1 fourth cup of fine rava or semolina. 1 fourth cup of melted ghee or clarified butter, salt to taste and approximately 1 fourth cup of water. Now I'm going to add the flour as well as the rava or the semolina to a bowl, add some salt to taste and mix the three well. Now if you don't have fine semolina, just grind the rough, the medium semolina in your big support. Now I'm going to add 7 teaspoons of hot ghee to this and I'm going to crumble this mixture with my fingers till it starts to resemble breadcrumbs. So you should be able to hold the mixture like this. That means the ghee has nicely coated the flour. And now we're just going to add very little water at a time and just mix everything we don't want a very soggy dough and we don't want a very dry dough. So just add a little water at a time. Mix all the dough really well. And now we're going to knead the dough for at least a whole minute. Till the dough doesn't stick to your hands anymore. So just keep kneading it. This is very important that you knead the dough well because we want a very flexible dough and you know it shouldn't stick to your fingers or your hands as you're kneading it. So I'm going to add a few drops of the ghee again and I'm just going to again knead it really really well. So a whole minute at least you need to knead this dough. Now I'll show you a closer look of how the dough should be. It, if you poke your fingers or you press your fingers down on the dough, it should make a mark on the dough and it shouldn't bounce back like you would with a pizza dough. And now we're going to rest this dough for about 2-3 to three hours which is also very important. Now we're going to start working on the filling. So here I've taken 4 cardamoms or elaichis. I'm just going to peel them. And then in my mortar and pestle, I'm just going to grind them to a very, very fine powder. Now if you're using ready-made uh, powder, you need about approximately 1 teaspoon. This really elevates the flavor of the filling. So once this is done, just set it aside. Now I'm going to roughly chop up some cashew nuts and some raisins, which are also called kishmish. We're just going to chop them up roughly. You could also add almonds. And we're going to set this aside. Now I'm going to use one cup of desiccated coconut, one cup of powdered sugar, one tablespoon of poppy seeds or khaskas. This is the same elaichi powder that we just finely ground and the uh, chopped cashew nuts and raisins. So this is going to be our filling. So first I'm going to dry roast the desiccated coconut on a very very low flame continuously stirring it till you get a very light brown color and you get this lovely aroma of the coconut. Now once that is done you're going to transfer this to a bowl. Now wipe your pan clean and again you're going to roast the poppy seeds for very little just about half a minute and then you're going to transfer that to, to the bowl in which we have transferred the coconut. So this doesn't have to be fried or roasted very long, just a little bit and transfer it to the bowl. Again, wipe your uh, pan and now we're going to dry roast the cashew nuts and the raisins. 
and again transfer that too to the bowl. So now we finish with roasting. Now we're just going to add the cardamom powder that we ground and we're going to give this a good mix. And now I'm going to add the powdered sugar and mix all of this really, really well. Now I'm going to transfer this mixture back to the pan on a very low flame and I'm going to come roast this till the sugar starts to melt and you get, you know, a little bit of a light brown kind of a filling. So this should take you about half a minute or so. And even the color of the filling will become a little light golden brown and you'll get this beautiful aroma of the coconut. So set this aside and now we'll, uh, you know, start on the dough. So I'm going to make small balls like this, which have to be really smooth without any cracks in them. And then I'm just going to roll out uh, the ball like this. You're not going to add any flour to our rolling board because our dough is so easy to work with. You should be able to lift this once you have rolled it out like this. Now I'm just going to take a teaspoon uh, of the filling. Don't take too much of the filling or don't take too less also, about a teaspoon should do. And then just dab some water on, you know, half of the circle. Just put all the filling together in the center. And then just fold one side onto the other like this. Now you've got to seal the edges really, really well. This is very, very important because if you don't do that, then when you go to deep fry these in your they're just going to crack open and all the filling is going to go into the oil. and It's going to be a real fiasco. And then just cut off the edges like this. If you don't have a cutter like this, you can just use a pizza cutter or regular knife and then just dab this uh, design down. That's also optional. And then you get this beautiful Nuri. So this is one way of doing it. I'll just show you a few more designs. So this is the same design. I'm just showing it to you again. Now, if you don't have this kind of a cutter, you can also make a design with a fork by just pressing down the fork on, you know, once you have cut off the extra edges. And then this is another design where uh, I'll just show it to you. So once you've done this part, then you just pick, fold, pick, fold, pick, fold to one side and pick, fold, pick, fold to the other side and you get this kind of a design. And then there's one design where you don't cut off the excess, you just dab down the wheel of the cutter and then just make a rough kind of a design if you don't want to cut off the excess. And you like the crispy ends. And one is where you just cut off the excess and just leave it at that without making any other designs. So there are lots and lots of ways of, uh, you know, making these nuris. Each family definitely has their own special way of making it. So that's it. And then uh, once all your nuris are done, you're just going to heat up your oil. Now you can just put a ball of the dough into the oil to test if the oil is ready. And once the ball comes up like this and turns brown, you know your oil is all ready. So you just put the nuris into the pan. Don't overcrowd the pan. And then just fry, fry them till they're nice and golden brown in color. And uh, drain off the excess oil onto some kitchen napkins. And that's it, friends. Your nuris are all ready to enjoy. They're really crispy and crunchy. And uh, the filling also is really yummy. So I hope you give this recipe a try. Deep dish with some baking paper or parchment paper as it is easier to remove the coconut ice once it is set. Now in a large bowl, we are going to take four cups of desiccated coconut, which is 250 grams, so I've already measured it. Now to this, we are going to add 125 grams of icing sugar or two cups of icing sugar and we're going to give this a very nice mix so that the desiccated coconut and the icing sugar gets mixed very well together. Now once the icing sugar and the coconut is mixed well, we're going to add one tin of condensed milk which is around 400 grams. So pour all the condensed milk into this coconut and sugar mixture. And we're going to give this a thorough mix. 
Now this coconut ice is such an easy recipe because there's no cooking involved, there's no baking involved. It's just mixing these three ingredients together which is so easy and simple and very quick too. Now using your hands, knead this well. Till it forms a nice soft dough and everything gets well mixed together now once our dough is formed we're going to take another bowl and we're going to make this dough into two equal halves Now to one of the halves, I'm going to be adding a rose pink color. You can add any color of your choice. You can either color one red, the other green, keeping with the Christmas theme. You can keep the entire mixture white. You can do whatever you like. You can keep it blue, you can give it yellow, whatever suits your fancy, add that color. But I like this pink and white combination. So I'm going to stick with this pink and white. So once you mix in the color very well. Now you can use any food color, gel or the liquid. Now we're going to put the white mixture first and we're going to pat it down till it forms an even layer and is spread out evenly all over the dish. So gently using the fing your fingertips, just tap it down till it gets nicely packed. Now we're going to put the pink dough on top of the white dough and do the same thing. Just pat it down. I'm using a little bit of, uh, first I'm patting it down with my spatula. And then by putting a little butter or ghee on my fingertips, it makes it much easier to pat it down lightly and make it and spread it out evenly so that it covers all of the white. Now this dough is very easy to work with. So just gently pat it down all over. And then with your spatula, just to give it an even, a nice finish, again pat it down gently all over. Now you can put this into the refrigerator to set for 2-3 hours, but I find cutting it up into squares before refrigerating it helps it, I mean helps in cutting the squares once it is nice and set. So I'm cutting up the squares. And then we have to refrigerate it for at least two to three hours till everything comes well. Our coconut ice is all ready to demold. So I'm just taking it out from the deep dish. And now with a very sharp knife, I'm just going over the lines that I cut initially so that I get even pieces. It's very easy to cut once it is nice and set. Doesn't it? It is a little heavy on the tummy to eat a lot of this sweet. So, you know, if you cut it up into little smaller sizes, um, especially people who are very health conscious about the sugar content, would like to have a smaller piece. So I have gone ahead and cut it out into smaller pieces. If you want to keep the whole squares, it's up to you. You can keep a whole square too. And I just tasted it and it is just delicious. Yumelicious actually.